Hello, what's going on? I'm Steven Bisso and I'm going to be going over how linear algebra can be used in game theory and other fields of math and science and in this case economics um, to help solve problems with systems of equations and uh, simplifying problems to linear equations. So in game theory for this particular project um, we're going to be working with two-person zero-sum game. A two-person zero-sum game um, for question one in this case is where a positive value represents the payoff for player A and a negative value will represent the payoff for player B. And for two-person zero-sum game, the payoff towards one player is the loss towards the other player. So a positive five here is positive five payoff for A, negative five payoff for B. Negative four is positive four for B and a negative four for A. So we're going to represent just one value to represent both the payoffs. And later on in question two, it will be a little different, but I'll get to that in a bit. So the payoff matrix, you can simplify this matrix, uh, or rewrite this matrix, I should say, as a matrix, and you can represent it with a letter, uh, variable A. And there's different strategies that each player uses. Player B has strategy one, two, three, and four. Player A has strategy one, two, and three. The expected payoff is an equation that is basically the payoff that happens when the game plays out. And the equation for the expected payoff can be seen here. And it's where the payoff matrix, which can be represented here, the matrix of the game, um, and the strategies of each player, which is the probabilities of choosing each of the different strategies. Um, the payoff matrix is a matrix, and the strategies can be represented by vectors. And so the pay expected payoff of the game is the summation of each of the combinations of the different strategies multiplied by each of the probabilities of each of the players. And that can be written with linear algebra as the probability or the strategy of each of the or the probability of each of the strategies of player A and take that vector and transpose it and multiply it by the payoff matrix and then multiply it by the strategy of player B. And so that's the formula we're going to be using for question one and question 1a. So suppose that player A uses strategy I half of the time and strategy 3 half of the time. So the P, the probability, is going to be a vector and I've got the work written out right here. Just one bit. So it says strategy I half the time and strategy 3 half the time. So strategy 1 half the time, strategy 3 half the time. Strat player B uses each of the strategies equally um, one-fourth of the time. So one-fourth, 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 one-fourth. And all of the strategies, or all the probabilities of each of the strategies have to add up to one because it's the amount of times that they'll use that strategy. So um, half the time and the other half the time, a fourth of the time. So they all have to add up to one because if it's one, that means they use that strategy 100% of the time. If it's zero, they never use that strategy. Anything between there is the, but you could think of it like the fraction of the times they use that strategy. So find the expected payoff of the game. So the probabilities of player A using each of the strategies can be transposed into this vector here. And player B's probabilities of their strategy can be seen as this vector here. And the matrix of the payoff can be seen as matrix A. And so the expected payoff is um, player A's probability, their strategy transpose multiplied by matrix A, multiplied by the strategies of player B and, and their vector. And here it can be seen. And so when you do the um, matrix and vector multiplication, and then you get a one by four, and then multiply 1 by 4 by 4 by 1 vectors, and you get negative 5 eighths as the expected payoff of the game. A negative 5 eighths indicates, um, a negative value indicates that player B will have um, the payoff and not player A, and they'll get 5 eighths of, um, or 5 eighths is the value of the payoff that they will receive. It's their utility points. You could think of each of these numbers as utility or um, if it was like a game, like a football game or something, it could be like a score um, or something like that. So question B, it says if player B keeps his strategy the same as in part A, what strategy should player A choose to maximize her expected payoff? So um, 
the player on the left is usually referred to as her, and the player on top is referred to as he. And so if player B keeps his strategy, then that means they keep one-fourth of the time each using each of the different strategies equally. What should player A choose to maximize her expected payoff? The fundamental theorem of a two-person zero-sum game states that each player will choose their best strategy, their optimal strategy, and they, or sorry, yes, their optimal strategy, and they will also um, expect the other player to choose their optimal strategy. So that's the fundamental theorem of a two-person game. And so for question B, 1B, it says using um, player B using one-fourth of the time, what should player A choose to maximize her payoff? So um, ignoring the payoffs previously shown, or sorry, the um, probabilities previously shown, which strategy or which new probability should they choose to get um, to maximize the payoff for player A? So in order to maximize the payoff for player A, we're going to examine each of the strategies and replace the payoff matrix with a 1 for the strategy to represent each of the different strategies and zeros to represent not using the strategy at all because if it's one that means the probability is certain and that's going to be the strategy that is used every time for player A. So instead of one half zero one half we're going to do different combinations as you can see here for question 1b using strategy one for player A this is the outcome it is a negative one fourth which means player B still um, reaps the majority of the expected payoff and then if player A uses strategy 2, 9 fourths is the expected payout to player A. And so that's a positive value. So that means player A reaps the benefits. And then if player A uses strategy 3, 100% of the time, it's a negative 1, which is also the payoff to player B. So strategy 2 is the greatest value out of the three different expected payoffs of the three different strategies that player A has. Um, if player B uses each of their strategies one-fourth of the time as seen here. So now looking at question C, it says if player A keeps her strategy the same as in part A, what strategy should player B choose to maximize his expected payoff? So it's similar to question B, but the other player has the same strategy that they had in, in que question 1A. So to set it up, it's the exact same way. Uh, player A has the same exact strategy, the vector, for their probabilities as they did in question 1, 1A. But this time, the vector, the column vector for player B will have a 1 to represent the first strategy and zeros to represent all the others um, to find the expected payoff for their um, first strategy. And then the second strategy will be a 1 in the second row of their column, their probability column and etc. So for three, it'd be the third row would have the one, and for four, it'd be the last row to have the one, and all the other rows having a zero, indicating that it would be 100% of the time using that strategy, and 0% of the time using the other strategies. So as you can see, the expected payoff for the first strategy is negative six, expected payoff for the second is three, one for the third, and negative one half for the fourth. Um, don't let the zero sum game trick you, because this question is asking if player A um, keeps his, her strategy the same, what should player B do to maximize his payoff? So player B's payoff, whenever it's maximized, is not going to be the positive values because positive values indicate payoff to player A. So the more negative values represent the more payoff to player B. So the question is asking what is the most negative value of payoff? Um, to, to maximize player B's profit. So out of these four different payoffs, negative six is the maximum um, amount of payoff to player B. So the answer to C is um, strategy one. And the answer to one B is strategy two. All right, so question two says two clothing stores in a shopping center compete for a weekend trade. On a clear day, the larger store gets 60% of the business, and on a rainy day, the large store gets 80% of the business. Either or both stores may hold a sidewalk sale on a given weekend, 
but the decision must be made a week in advance and in ignorance of the competitor's plans. If both have a sidewalk sale, each get 50% of the business. If, however, one holds the sale and the other does not, the, conducting, the one conducting the sale gets 90% of the business on a clear day and 10% of the business on a rainy day. It rains 40% of the time. How frequently should each retailer conduct sales? That is, how frequently should they conduct sales to maximize their profit? Um, because in the two-person zero-sum game, one of the fundamental principles is that each of the players will always choose the strategy that maximizes their gains, and they assume that the other player is choosing the strategy that maximizes their gains. So to approach this problem, um, there's two different scenarios whenever it rains and whenever it does not rain. So there's going to be two separate matrices that are two by two matrices because each of the stores have two options. They can sell in the store or sell on the sidewalk. And so I've got it represented by two different matrices here, the, the clear day and the rainy day. So on the clear day, the large store has their two strategies um, to sell on the sidewalk and in the store, and the small store has the same two strategies in store and on the sidewalk. And based on the problem, I've set up the percentages to be out of um, one, so they're uh, fractions rather than percentages. So 60% is 0.6 as seen here. If they both sell in store on a clear day, it's 0.6 for the payoff. And I have it, um, based on my setup, indicating that the 0.6 will be the profit going to the large store, and 0.4 is the remaining, which will go to the small store. So each of these payouts is, for this zero-sum game, adding up to 1, and whatever happens to this number is towards the large store, and 1 minus this number goes to the small store for this zero-sum game. So with these two matrices, we need to figure out a way to combine the matrices uh, into some, something solvable. Because as it is, um, the, the, the saddle point of this matrix, um, or in other words, the optimum strategy for each of the st stores is to sell in, um, on the sidewalk on the clear day because let's say large store uses the in store um, what should the small store do as a result get 0.6 or 0.1 remember they want the smaller number so 0.1 so if the large store is on um, selling in store the small store wants the sidewalk if the large store is selling on the sidewalk 0.9 or 0.5 the small store wants the smaller number so they would also sell on the sidewalk so with this matrix um, the saddle point is to sell both stores on the sidewalk on a clear day. And for the rainy day, it's the opposite. Um, they both want to sell in store on the rainy day. So because the strategies are not the same, we need to discover a new approach at solving this. A good way to visualize this game is a 2x2x2 two by two by two matrix where the large store has their two strategies, the small store has their two strategies, and the weather has the two strategies. And using the expected payoff equation, rather than just having it where it is the um, payoff of that individual block in the matrix multiplied by each of the probabilities, with this 2x2x2, two by two by two, it'll be the the payoff of each of the blocks or the combinations multiplied by each of the probabilities of the three different players involved in this game. So for the weather, it only has clear and rainy, and the probabilities are actually given as six-tenths of the time it's, it's clear, and four-tenths of the time it's rainy. So we can split this up and have it where you split the summation into one of the summations with the six-tenths multiplied by it, and the other summation with the four-tenths multiplied by it. And likewise, you can split the two matrices up, the payoff matrices. So I'm going to say 6 tenths times the clear payoff matrix plus 4 tenths times the rainy payoff matrix. And then those two matrices can combine to give you a new payoff matrix that represents the game. 
So with the new payoff matrix affected by the weather, um, you can see here the new values where the in-store will give you 0.68 and both going on the sidewalk will be 0.5. So evaluating this, there is now a saddle point. So there is now a dominant strategy for each of the players or one of the players has a dominant strategy and the other one knowing that the other player will use that dominant strategy will be left with only two options so for the small store if um, the large store go sells in store then the small store will sell on the sidewalk because they want the smaller value and if the large store sells on the sidewalk the small store will also again sell it on the sidewalk because they want the smaller value so no matter what there's a dominant strategy where the small store sells on the sidewalk and therefore large store knowing this beforehand uh, is stuck between these two options and they want the larger value the larger payoff for them so they will sell on the sidewalk as well so both stores have a strategy that is at a saddle point of 0.5 so the answer to how frequently should each retailer conduct sales is 100% of the time on the sidewalk for both stores because um, the small store has a dominant strategy to always sell on the sidewalk to get a better payoff and the large store with the two options given based on the sidewalk um, based on the small stores decision will always get a better payoff by selling on the sidewalk as well so each store will sell on the sidewalk 100% of the time and both stores would get 50% of the profits. This has been all for this video and this project. I'm Stephen Bisso. Thank you for listening.